If you guys have watched my previous video on the user testing website, you might be wondering how you can pass their entrance test and start making money with the website. So if you've got a bit of anxiety or just aren't sure how to get past the entrance test, I've got five tips in this video to help you guys out and make sure you guys get straight past that entrance test. So just to get started here, I'm going to be intermixing these tips with some footage of me doing user tests on another website called UserFeel. Uh, if you guys are just wondering why the software looks a little bit different, it is on UserFeel, not user testing. Same tips and same testing process though. So my first tip before we even get into the video is to keep speaking at all times. If you guys aren't sure what to say, on the screen, try your best to think out loud, uh, discuss your impressions of the website, but when all else fails, I would advise just kind of repeating what's on the website and then adding maybe a bit of a comment uh, with your thoughts over just remaining silent. Remaining silent is basically suicide in this test. Tip number two for you guys is to make sure that you stay on track. Uh, if you ever get lost in the test or aren't sure why you're saying what you're saying, go ahead and click the little thing in the top to refresh your mind about what the task is. And as you finish a task, you may want to include a bit of a summary of exactly your thoughts on completing the task. Perfect. So I do see this website, rosewholesale.com, in the browser. So that's happened correctly. Awesome. Yes, I see the website. What is my first impression of this web page? What is the page for? Oops. What is the page for? Who is the target audience? Browse around for one to two minutes providing your feedback. Um, it looks looks pretty nice. It looks like it's probably a shopping website here. Um, there is a lot of blank space on the website which does seem to be a bit unnecessary. Um, I'm not sure if it's just not laying out properly in my browser, but there does seem to be a lot of blank space here um, that I would prefer not to be there. In fact, I'm not sure if all this is loading correctly because I don't think this is laid out very well. But it does look to be a, a online store website. There's a sale going on. Um, Primarily, it looks like they're looking for me to buy Christmas items. However, I think that the store uh, sells all sorts of clothing items, it would look like, um, as well as wigs, apparently. Um, so a variety of uh, apparel here uh, that I could buy on the website. Overall, it's quite attractive despite the layout issues. Um, if those could be fixed, the website, uh, it, lo it looks pretty good. It, it is attractive. I'm not so sure about this green text on the red background here. That could be hard to read, but everything else on the on the website is clear and easy to read and understand, so that's great. Okay. Okay, now watch what I do here. You'll notice that I say things like, I expect, and that's something I recommend you do as well. When you're going through the test, say, I expect, I'm looking for. Things of this nature help uh, cue the person watching the video to understand your thinking process better and get a better idea of what you're observing on the website and how you're seeing things on your angle. Um, but since I'm looking for men's watch, I'm going to go ahead and click men's watches, although I might expect that there would be a matching women's watches section. And so now it's taken me conveniently to the men's watches section. Um, so that's good. And now I'm looking to filter by price. So I'm not sure if there's somewhere along the side here that I can enter it. Ah, yes. So my, my thought was going to be to go over here and sort by low or high price um, and then see if I could type some sort of a range if there wasn't that one on the side. But I do see that there is this filter on the side and I'm looking for which price range? 20 to $50, uh, which is conveniently a price range option right here. And I could look at any one of these men's watches right here. Um, a black watch. Oh, I wonder if I could filter by color. I mean, a lot of these watches are black, but we could go ahead and filter by color. Okay, that's 
pretty intuitive, although it didn't seem to work because this watch is not black. Um, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and click this one right here. Perfect. So I found a black men's watch. Number four, don't complete the test like an expert. Take your time. Even if you know exactly what you're doing, you've checked out a million online shopping carts before, just go ahead and take your time. Make sure that you explain the thoughts and explain what you're looking for. Use those I expects, I'm looking for. If you're unsure, state, I'm unsure. If you think someone else might be unsure, you could even say, I understand that this is the case, but I'm unsure that others would be able to. So I'm going to go through the whole checkout process. Don't click on the final submit button. Because I'm going to go ahead and add this to my bag. Uh, normally I might expect that that would say add to shopping cart. Uh, but shopping bag is, is the same concept, I suppose. Uh, and interestingly enough, it's immediately taken me to my bag. What I actually would have expected to have happen is some sort of notification in the corner, maybe up here, that said that... Um, it had been added to my cart, but I actually didn't expect to be taken immediately to the cart. I would have expected the continue shopping option to happen automatically. That seems to happen more frequently these days when I'm shopping online, at least in my experience. Anyway, uh, moving on, we have options here for promotion code. Um, perfect, so we could do that. And there's checkout with PayPal or proceed to checkout. I'm assuming that I'm going to um, proceed to checkout, although this is an odd option um, to have right here, seeing as I haven't entered my address and other information yet. I would expect this button to be in step three. Anyway, we're going to proceed to checkout. Okay, uh, so it's asking me to create an account. Tip number five, if you're asked to put in any details on the website, make sure they're fake. You don't want to be putting in real addresses or even worse credit card numbers on these websites. Put in all the fake details you can. You aren't doing anything bad by doing that and that is the best possible way to complete the test. Okay, perfect. So I found an address just in Newmarket, Ontario I'm going to use here. So. 152 Longford Drive. Oh, great. And it's gone ahead and found that address for me. Perfect. Um, awesome. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Gonna go ahead and find a uh, fake phone number here. I, d I don't know what the, the area code is there, but we'll go 603 um, 221. Nine six seven four. Um, perfect, and we'll see if it does allow me to confirm my address there. Perfect, and so we have James Smith located at one fifty two Longford Drive in Newmarket, Ontario. This postal code is correct. It does match what I saw there. Now we have the option to do shipping, and I believe this is the button that I am not supposed to click. Um, but we do have the flat rate shipping. Kind of disappointing that um, we would need to spend an extra $2 to get a tracking number, um, but that's all right. That was pretty easy to go through the checkout pro. Actually, it was very easy to go through the checkout process. I didn't run into any hurdles. Overall, it's a pretty nice website. There were a few layout issues here in Firefox, and now I'm not sure if those are Firefox specific or something uh, particular with the website um, being, you know, a prototype potentially. But um, overall, it was a very easy to use website. The one issue with the categorization is that when you have the men's category um, and the watches category, it was really kind of a bit of a gamble as to which one I was going to go for. 
I went for the watches category, which made it very easy to find what I was looking for, but if I had gone into the men's category first, it may have taken a significantly longer time and been quite frustrating for me to actually find the watch. Furthermore, when I actually clicked the color separation, it didn't actually seem to work. I found blue watches um, in there, um, and again, that may just be a fact of the prototype, but I do feel that it's something to point out. Besides that, the website was very easy to use. Um, anyone who's shopped online at another website should be able to figure this one out. I did find it odd that the PayPal button was placed on the initial screen and not on the screen like this. Um, usually I would expect to see some sort of order confirmation screen before I would get the option to pay with PayPal. Um, what else was I thinking of? There was that one Facebook button that was spelt wrong. Um, seeing wrong spellings can really make someone question the, legitimate, the legitimacy of a website uh, just simply due to the fact that if it is any sort of scam organization or something, um, of course this isn't, but uh, you know a lot, a lot of those scam emails and the like tend to have very poor, poor grammar as they're written in someone in a, in a third world country who speaks English as a second language. Um, and, and so they, they tend to get poor grammar. So poor grammar can be a sign that something may be illegitimate. Um, so it's, it's really important that that Facebook button get corrected. Um, besides that, it was a super easy website to use. Thanks for allowing me to test it. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed having a quick look at this test. I hope it helps you complete the user testing or user feel entrance exams. And I hope that you guys will be making money on these websites within a short period of time. My name is Ryan. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.